Welcome to Roadfly TV, your latest automotive fix from Roadfly.com. Welcome to Roadfly TV. I'm Jesse Lang bringing you the lowdown on the 2010 Mercedes Benz GLK 350. Powered by a 268 horsepower, 3.5 liter V6, the 2010 GLK 350 has a boldly unique design that sets it apart from the rest of the Mercedes Benz SUV lineup. Roadfly correspondent Steve Hamm has spent a week test driving it and brings you his impressions of the GLK. Mercedes took a long time in joining the premium small sport ute segment, instead focusing their attention on big and bigger in the ML and GL. BMW has practically owned this class for years with their X3, but now everyone's jumping in, and for 2010, Mercedes brings us the GLK. Showcasing sharp lined, flashy styling with an oversized three-point star, this mini SUV emulates the look of the venerable G-Class, even taking on its steeply raked windshield. And from behind the wheel, it feels just as solid. Though built on a non-SUV-like unibody platform, the GLK's chassis and body is one rigid structure, giving you the feeling of vault-like security. My tester came with the optional 4MATIC full-time four-wheel drive system, and though I only exercised it on some very light off-road duty, I was surprised by the GLK's go-anywhere persona. Though there's no transfer case with a low range, there is nearly 8 inches of ground clearance and a comfort mode for the 7-speed auto to more adroitly administer the power. And that power stems from under the C-Class hood. It's a 268 horsepower, 3.5 liter V6, providing more than enough room and accompanying sweet sounds. Racing to 60 miles per hour can be accomplished in a brisk 6.5 seconds. So the GLK has that satisfying Mercedes level of power we've come to expect. Gas mileage on premium is a disappointing 16 MPG City 21 highway. And nagging the GLK from being a full force performance machine is some soccer mom friendly steering and some relaxed twisty road dynamics. After seeing the TV spots emphasizing the GLK safety credentials and then experiencing its dialed down driving style, it became evident to me that the GLK is geared toward the female driver or those whose priorities lie outside driving satisfaction. It's not that the GLK doesn't work well at what it does, it's just that it's not the super sharp driving machine that lives in the new Audi Q5. And therein lies the GLK's toughest competitor. If you want the most car-like driving experience of the two, the Q5 is a no-brainer. But the GLK shouldn't be dismissed for its more SUV-like qualities, if that's what you're looking for. But the GLK does have another issue, and that is in rear seat room, which is the tightest you'll find. Adults will balk at the lack of leg room, while cargo room gets first dibs on space. It's quite roomy back here, and comes with a nifty collapsible storage box. Rear seats are easy to fold as well without having to move the front seats forward. Available in rear and four-wheel drive trims, GLK pricing starts at $35,475. My tester, with the 4MATIC and a host of costly options, including the multi-media and full leather seating packages and panorama sunroof, comes in at $47,445. At that inflated price, I'd expect fewer faults, and personally, I'd take the Audi in a heartbeat, but the GLK has merit for its eye-catching design, comfortable ride, rock-solid body, strong safety jeans, and energetic engine. It just doesn't evoke that driving passion and acumen of the excellent Q5. For Roadfly TV, I'm Steve Hammes. Roadfly.com, the internet's best resource for buyers, sellers, and owners like you.